Q-Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your Fountain Pen Enthusiast hosts, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 22 for Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. We are recording live on Monday, April 23rd. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. This is Eric. This is Dan. Dan, how are you today? I am doing really good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. You're coming in really strong. I wonder if your gains turned up a little bit. Um, I can adjust that a little bit. How's that for you? Well, I'd notice no difference. <laughs> no difference. No difference at all. All right. What about? Well, we'll do some oh, yeah, that adjusting. you went away now. What, did you walk across the room? I'm sorry. I didn't mean okay. to. You're back. You're perfect. Am, am, am That's I, perfect. Okay. Don't touch a thing. I'll, I'll stop touching things. Sorry. <laughs> How's everything in Iowa today, this wonderful Monday? Really good. We got some good weather. Uh, turkey season started last week, so uh, having fun with that. Well, when you say turkey season started, what, what exactly does that mean? You go to the store and buy a turkey? Um, no, hunting season, hunting season started last Monday, so we can hunt them with bows and shotguns. And you use bows, don't you? I do, yeah. Yeah. And have you gone out yet? I have. I've been out two or three times. How many did you get? I haven't got any yet. <laughs> it's just, it's I, fun just I've to wait. I've only seen one. You've seen one. Someone else got it? No, not yet. Mm. <laughs> so what about you? What have you been up to? Oh, just staying out of the rain, believe it or not. It's raining in Southern California. It's been a drizzly, really? drizzly, drizzly day. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that, too. But <laughs> other than that, just trying to stay dry. And, and, and I've been playing with a lot of pens, but I suppose we'll talk about pens. Um, so uh, do, do we know what the weather is going to be like in a couple of weeks in Chicago? I haven't checked because I guess I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I mean, we're going to be spending all our time inside, but I just thought it was a good segue to the Chicago Pen Show, which is coming up May 3rd through the 6th, and we will definitely be there in full force. So, In full force. We're, uh, uh, we're excited about that. The Grays are going to be there, Edison Pen Company. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun there. Uh, definitely check out the Chicago Pen Show's website at chicagopenshow.com. They've got their full list of pins going up in the auction. You can check those out and look at all the pictures. Um, some really spectacular pins in there. Have, have you had a chance to look at those yet? I suppose you're talking to me since no one else can answer you. Uh, no, I haven't <laughs> looked at the pictures of the pins. Um, are you, is that what you were saying, that the, the auction pens, the pictures of the auction pens right. are online? No, I, right. I, I guess I'm just going to let myself be surprised because, I, first of all, I know I'm not going to be able to afford any of them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they've got some just out-of-this-world pens. I mean, mint condition, very uncommon, you know, uh, Parker lapis dual fold sets, you know, stickered walls and, and water mints. I mean, just unreal. Definitely go check that out if you're interested in vintage pens. And I think I want to see the auction. Um, uh, Brian Anderson, AndersonPens.net, just posted a blog post about uh, about auctions, pen auctions specifically. Um, and he made it sound like it was fun. So uh, I think we have to go oh, see I'm it. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. <laughs> because I don't know how fun it's going to be if we can't spend any money, but... well. We'll have to find out. Perhaps we can yeah. bid even though we know we don't have the money. And then run. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and then right after the Chicago Pin Show, we are going to be at Camp Edison. And Eric, have we figured out what we're going to do there yet? We're have lots of fun is what we're going to do at Camp Edison. Well, I know that, but I just want to know what kind of fun we're going to have. Well, it'll have something to do with pens, I'm sure. You can't go to Camp Edison and not talk about pens. And I don't know, maybe we'll get to work with some of the equipment that he uses. Uh, maybe he'll, you know, he'll, in addition to giving us a tour of the shop, he'll let us get, do some hands-on stuff. That's cool. I hope we'll so. To, you know, work on him for that. All right. And uh, coming up May 12th is the Nuremberg Pen Show in Germany. And this show is actually sponsored by Kaweco. Um, I'd never heard of this show. I found it when I was browsing Kaweco's website. And so if you're going to be over in Germany on May 12th, you know, definitely stop by and check out that show and let us know how it goes. What should we do? We should go to Chicago, the Chicago show, then go to Camp Edison and then zip over to Nuremberg. Sure. Why, why not? Why we not? got credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the month, uh, May 31st through June 3rd is the ninth annual Triangle Pin Show in Raleigh, North Carolina. And they're going to have an auction there. They're going to have some seminars and workshops. Um, they don't have any details up on their website yet, but uh, definitely check out their website and uh, look at all the information they've got. I think Bexley is one of their sponsors, 
And uh, they've got quite a few other sponsors, too. But uh, uh, that'd be a really cool show to go to. Do either of us know why it's called the Triangle Pen Show? Are all the pens triangular? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any clue why it's called that. I I'm sure someone in chat should know. Someone, someone somewhere knows why. It's, it's probably has to do with geographic location. It's a triangle, some sort of famous triangle that I'm not aware of because it's on the wrong coast as opposed <laughs> to the left coast. Okay. So, yeah, definitely check out our website for the full show calendar. We've got links to all the shows. We've got dates and their locations. Um, how many shows do we have, Eric? We've got like over 25 listed, don't we? Isn't it 2,500? Isn't there like <laughs> 13, 13 shows a day? I, no, I don't know. At least twenty five um, shows. And did you did yeah, you you just found the Nuremberg show? So we got to add that if you haven't already. I have, and yeah, I'm adding them. You know, as soon as I find them, if we don't have them, they go up. And if you know of any that we don't have, please email us and let us know. So, you're gonna go talk about the poll question. It was it was. Yeah. I think it was your suggested. Was your your suggestion was the poll question. Yeah, it was. I was curious about what people do with brand new pens that don't write very well out of the box. Um, I personally adjust the nib myself. I, I, I get it exactly how I want it with flow and, you know, maybe I'll even grind it if I want to stub or cursive italic or something like that. Eric, what do you do? Uh, I, I scowl in frustration and go back to a favorite pen. Really? You don't touch it or no, anything? No, it really depends. On, I, that's what I answered. Cause okay. Even if I do go back and touch it and try to adjust it myself, before I do that, I scowl in frustration and go back to a favorite pen. And then eventually I'll go and try to do something. And depending on the pen is what I'll do. If it's a, you know, a pen that I wouldn't mind ruining, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't kill me to ruin, <laughs> I'll work on it myself. If it's, uh, you know, the 149, I would never touch that. Yeah. So I would send that well, to a nibmeister. We had a 39% say they'd adjust the nib themselves. 21% uh, said they'd ask for a replacement. 17 said I'd scowl in frustration and go back to my favorite pen. And, and one interesting thing was we had two votes that said they'd throw the pen away. Now, I find this a little hard to believe. How about you? Well, I don't know. I was, I was thinking one of those votes was from your wife. <laughs> no, I don't think she voted. <laughs> no, I don't know. We had, uh, I think we only had one of those votes for to throw the pen away up until today or yesterday. Someone else chimed in with, I throw the pen away. And, of course, that depends on the pen, too. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's a... a 5 a to $10 cheap. pen, I might just do that. But, you know, the 149 I wouldn't throw <laughs> No, no, there's no way. <laughs> so, um, uh, we have a new one, a new poll question. Oh, we uh, do? Yes. And I don't know if I've worded it quite right just yet, because I just made it up. Uh, but for right now, the question that I have is... Is there a price point at which a fountain pen must have a gold nib? Does that make sense to you, Dan? Yeah, yeah, it does. So like, if, would uh, you buy a five hundred dollar pen if it didn't have a gold nib? Something. That's what I mean by that question. And is the, and oh, look at your face! I see that you would have trouble with a five hundred dollar pen with a steel nib. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot more to a pen than just the nib's material. Um, because I'm a firm believer that I can make a steel nib feel just as good as any gold nib. I think we both agree that uh, there's uh, performance-wise, there's no difference. I mean, there doesn't have to be a difference between steel and gold. Right, and and you know, at five hundred dollars, I would like to have that gold nib on there just to help me feel good. feel better about paying that much <laughs> for a pen. You know, it's like, well, at least it's got a gold nib. You know, I mean, there's at least a hundred dollars in gold in there, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, All right, so I I would say if I'm going to spend more than 150 dollars on a pen, I, I would like it to have a gold nib. You know, just kind of in general, without specifying a certain pen or anything. But uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I'll try to come up with some some answers. That yeah, the, the problem with the poll, one small tiny problem with the poll, is that you can't write in your own answer. Of course, if if oh. we did that, we'd have 209 different answers from last week. <laughs> So I have still right. have to come up with the answers, but I think that's going to be an interesting question to pose to people. So what about you? Is there a limit where you just would not buy a pen if it didn't have a gold nib? Oh, well, like you, my first thought is if I'm going to spend $500 on a pen, I'd like it to have a gold nib just so I can feel better about spending $500 on the pen. But I think it also matters what the pen is made of, doesn't it? 
I mean, yeah. I would probably spend more than 500 on a really beautiful maquillé urushi pen, uh, knowing that th- what, I'm, what I'm spending the money on is the artistry that went into the pen and not necessarily the nib. Right. So see what I mean? I, I, yeah. the, 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 the answers to the question are going to have to be spread out somehow. But, okay, so let's, let's, you know, kind of look at it. There are a lot of pens out there that are just acrylic or, or celluloid or, you know, special resins that uh, r- easily run $500, you know, have, have a piston filler, you know, maybe gold-plated hardware. If, if you found a pen like that and it didn't have a gold nib, would you spend 500 bucks Probably on it? Probably not. But can you name one of those? As in, you said uh, uh, a, with, piston, with a steel piston nib? filler... Uh, gold or even rhodium trim. Uh, well, let's let's say you're Aurora 88, a, a modern Aurora 88 with a steel nib that cost what? What do they cost? Brand new? Five fifty? Five seventy five? Yeah. No, no. Uh, no, no I, would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, mean, it, it, it absolutely has to have a gold nib. <laughs> so, <laughs> so see what I mean? I don't even know if they're. I don't know if enough answers can be put into that poll but i'm gonna try my best we'll see what happens maybe we should save that for the forum and, and start a discussion we'll do that next week first we'll, we'll, okay. we'll introduce it in the poll otherwise i have to come up with a whole new poll question <laughs> <laughs> hey can we jump to a letter that we got before we move on to uh to the news uh, from from the website yeah absolutely so in our mailbag and i'm skipping around and i'm surprising dan with this so you know if he's got that face on that says what the heck is he doing it's because i didn't tell him i was going to do this one of the letters that we got snail mail handwritten letter was from tamara hello tamara if you're out there and she started the letter i'm going to read dear fp geeks i'm writing this letter to thank you and chastise you gently for all you do for your uh, your website and weekly podcast. I'm writing you with my new Platinum 3776 Century Fountain Pen in that red color that I can't pronounce. Do you remember that one? Oh, the Bounguin. The, the, yeah, the Burgundy. The, the Burgundy clear- in, in French that no one, that someone tried to teach me and I didn't learn it. Uh, which I may never have gotten if it had, if you had not mentioned it. It arrived yesterday, as did my first Greg Minuskin nib attached to a Green Schaefer touchdown filler that I also blame, scratch that, thank you for. She's blaming us for these pen purchases, and we're getting this a lot, but uh, I'm very fine with that. But I I wanted to read that out loud before we did the first story from the website, because I want people to know that even though we're taking the blame for your pen purchases, we are not immune Dan and I are not immune to the stories that hit the website at FP Geeks. With that, Dan, what's the first story you want to cover this week? Um, Monteverde is releasing three new colors in their Artista Crystal Fountain Pen. Has pens. released. Has, Has released. released. They are now available. Um, they've, they've had a clear one out for quite some time, but they recently uh, just released three new colors, pink, green, and blue. And we've got quite a bit of feedback on these. They look very similar um, to Twisby's pens. Not, not Just, as similar as those, what were they, Pilots from last week? Yes, they yeah, were no, Pilots. Pilots were, were like, copies. They, those were like carbon <laughs> yeah. copies. I mean, same colors. Like, it was crazy. Um, these, these are pretty different. They're cartridge converter fillers. They have chrome trim and a steel nib. Now, did we ever figure out what the deal was with the width on the nibs medium, because I thought it was medium, medium only. Medium only is what they come in. Okay, so because a couple other websites did list them in fine, medium, and broad, right? But that was in error. Okay. And I know because I bought one. You ordered? Yes. Oh, yeah, what did you buy? I, I bought one of these Monteverdi's. <laughs> well, which color I meant. I, I know what you, you buy. You know what color I got. But do you not want to tell us? I got the pink one. Oh, okay. One. I don't know if I, anybody can see this. Oh, I got the pink one. And go ahead, ask me if I like it. You like I it? I do like it very much. I think it's darker in the picture on the website. The, the, okay. the pink is darker. So this is more of a washed out pink. Just a little little more washed out pink. Um, and the nib, I'm not going to say that... You know, I, my only real other experience with Monteverdi's is the Monteverde Invincia stylus that we reviewed. Uh, remember that nib? I do. I I love it. <laughs> that nib was out of the box fantastic. And this one is almost as good. But not almost. not quite as good as that one. 
What is it a flow issue or, or smoothness, smoothness or smoothness issue okay. that I got the, the fine on that uh, Monteverde in, in Vincia and just right out of the box, it was smooth and wonderful. And this one is, is wonderful. Just not as, you know, I'm comparing it to the, to the other Monteverde that I have. So that okay. was a high standard to live up to, but I like it. It's fun. It's pink. It's, you know, so, it's pink without being in your face pink. It's yeah. like I'm a rebel now because I got a <laughs> pink pen, but it's not really pink. I'm not committed yet. Uh, what, what do you think of the size? Because it measures um, what, just over four and a half inches? I think it was like 125 millimeters long and uh, 14 millimeters in diameter. So is is it is it a big pen? Is it a small pen? What I mean, it's a small ish. A, but uh, I'm holding the bottoms together, and this is where it lines up with a micarta. So I mean, it's not that much smaller than a micarta lengthwise. Okay. So the size is fine for me. All right. And, and what about the weight? Is it pretty light? No, being, because the no? section, unfortunately, is metal, and it weighs only about three metric tons. <laughs> but it does give it good heft, uh, and, and I think without it, you probably wouldn't, it wouldn't have good balance at all. The, what I don't think was mentioned in anything I read about it and surprised me when it got here, and I don't know if anyone would see it, but I'll, sh- I'll show it on the camera anyway, even though this is going to be an audio-only podcast. So the people who are listening to this audio-only, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, sec- the, the feed is clear like acrylic or something. Of course, it's all, it's oh. all black now because I have ink in it. But uh, Yes, I, I knew that. I must have not put maybe that Maybe it's in, in there. there. I, I don't know that I read every word of what you wrote because I saw pink and I started looking for it online. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, the so, weight is good. The balance is good. And the size is and, fine. And you like it? I like You're it. You're happy with the purchase? I'm happy with the purchase. All right. And did we mention the price? It was, it was $45 is what it's available for. $45 plus shipping in my case. Um, and Jimmy James, he in chat, he actually brings up a really good point. He says, so I wonder if that means it's not a great pen for Bay State Blue. And the reason he says that is because uh, Richard Bender put out a notice this past week of Bay State Blue destroying clear feeds in Namiki and Pilot pens. Um, so he's, he's posted that on his Facebook site and I believe a, a forum somewhere. I can't remember where, but definitely check out his Facebook site. We'll we'll link to it in the show notes, so you can check out all the details there. But do you do you, do have you any... own Bay State Blue, Dan? I do a big bottle of it. <laughs> do you use it? Absolutely. Oh. And what do you have it? One one pen off the top of your head. Um, I don't have it filled in anything right now. I did have it in the Ahab when I first got that, and it, it didn't do any damage to the Ahab. Oh, no, it's just fine. It, it has a reputation. And, you know, Richard coming out and s- people usually don't like to commit and be specific. Bay State Blue is going to uh, damage this pen. Uh, yeah. Unless, you know, they're a salesperson for a particular pen and say, don't use Bay State Blue in my pen. I've never used it, and I don't think I will. Just because. Why take a chance? Yeah. It, it's so good, though. The blue is, oh, it's so awesome. Use it in a dip but, uh, pen. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, this Monteverde has got a clear feed. So use base date at your own risk. Yeah, that's, that's I would all agree. I can say. So uh, moving on, Chatterley Pins has created a new pin. Um, they've, they've worked with Delta, and they've actually released 10 new pins in nine different colors. So if, if you have trouble deciding on which pin to buy, you might not want to check this <laughs> post out because making a decision will be virtually impossible. Um, it has a, a 14 karat gold nib and it comes in a single tone. It's either gold or I guess it'd be platinum plated to, to match the silver trim that some pins come in. Um, now the trims come in either gold vermeil or solid sterling silver. Now, Eric, do you know what gold vermeil is? It's a gold color metal. It's well, it's it's actually gold plating over solid sterling silver, and I didn't actually know that um, until I saw this post. I I had heard of gold vermeil, but well, I knew I, I knew it was a plating, but is it only called vermeil if it's over uh, sterling silver? Is that is yeah. that okay? Yep. So if you put gold plating on something that's not sterling silver, it can't be called or shouldn't be called gold vermeil. Correct. Interesting. Um, 
and it these pens feature Delta's ratcheting piston filler, which we really like. And on the crown of, of the cap is an eight pointed star, and that's where the pens get their name from. It's it's called the Dolce Vita Stan Tufo Star Collection. So, Eric, did did you have a favorite color in these? I mean, because they only came out with nine of them. I know they only came out that uh, one of the red ones. One of the yeah. red ones. That was mine. The the Caesar Reborn. The the really bright, vibrant that red. That was probably that my was least color. favorite red. Oh I really? Like, I kind of like the middle red, the one that has a little, not the really darkish, the one that's hardly red at all. I like the the darker okay. of the if the, if you if you look at those pictures and say there's only two, I like the darker red of the two, and you like the brighter. Okay. Yep, and. These pens, they're, they're numbered to 23 pens in each color worldwide, uh, MSRP of six ninety five, and he's actually selling them for a street price of three ninety five. And when you so, say he, who do you mean? Uh, Bryant Greer okay. of Chatterley Pens. So it's not a bad price, I mean, for what you're getting. Uh, no, it's an excellent pen. This is just like our... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan. Is this not just like our, uh, our blue pens? Yes, the ones that we featured in the awesome right. review. Um, so it's an excellent pen. Three ninety five is worth it. And, and yeah, I, I would say so. so. When we when when the story says that Chatterley Pens is, is doing this with Delta, this is probably one of the things that uh, Bryant discussed with them while he was there in Italy with them. Said, "Well, why can't we do these pens in all these different you know this this material, that material, the other material, and that there's only twenty three of each, and they're they're numbered." Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you can get them in a fine, medium, broad, or stub for an extra thirty bucks. Now, going back to that gold vermeil, I have one question that came to mind. Yeah, why would anybody ruin sterling silver by putting gold plating on? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, you know, some people like that. So, <laughs> to each their own, I guess. Yeah. So we bring Twisby up. It seems like they're in our podcast every week. I don't think we have a show without mentioning Twisby. No, I guess we can't. Oh. And the website, you know, the website keeps track of uh, what most people are looking at. You know, the popular posts, either by comment or by views. It's just Twisby, 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 Twisby. All over the yeah. place. And oh. I, I think Philip and, and Speedy are like going around to different internet <laughs> connections and just going to our website. I don't know. Uh, but they've given us another glimpse at the mini and this one has a black cap, a clear barrel, and a black piston knob. And it is gorgeous. I love the look of this pen. Um, Eric, what do you think of it? <laughs> you know, if it didn't have the black piston knob, I wouldn't care for it as much as I do. But I have to admit, I do like this pen. I really like it, too. I would love to see this come out in a 540. That would be really cool in a 540, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Um, and we also learned that uh, Speedy's favorite ink is diamine orange. Did you know that? I didn't know that until he admitted it. Yeah, I had no clue either. But uh, that's, that's what the 540 next to that is filled with. And speaking of Speedy, he's been very generous this week. He showed us his daily carry pens and the pouch that he carries them in. And that was yeah. by far... I don't even know if it was by far, but by quite a big margin, the most popular post of the week based on views. Really? Yes. I, I did not see the views on that. <laughs> because I guess everybody wants to know what he's carrying. But uh, yeah, he carries a precision ball pin, the Micarta, the Diamond 540, and of course, a Diamond Mini. Now, isn't that surprising? I didn't think it was that surprising. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I, I was a little surprised to not see a pin of a different brand in there. Well, I don't think that um, ballpoint is a Twisby. But it might have been made I, at his factory, for, for all sure. I know. Yeah. but uh, And then the wrap that he was carrying them in is one of the coolest things I've ever well, seen. I've never seen one quite like I'm this. Pretty sure, it, I'm pretty sure that was the wrap that got... I mean, aside from seeing what he carries, which is very interesting, I think the wrap is what got most, most people's attention. It certainly got mine, and of course I want one. I do, but too. But it's like um, a made by the mother of a friend of, a, of an aunt, or you know, one of those situations. It, yeah, it is. They're, they're handmade by one of his friend's mom, and it holds five pins on the inside, and it has a little flap to cover them. And then when you roll it up, there's also a slot for two pins on the outside. Which is so convenient. So, 
Oh, yeah, it's great. And we did have someone in the comments post a link to a, a Japanese website that sells a pin case similar to this where it holds one pin on the outside and five on the inside. Um, but two of the slots on the inside are, are for really short pins. Like you couldn't fit a regular size pin in there. So it, it was a little different. And I don't, I don't know if they'd actually ship to the U.S. What, that the link that was shared in chat? Right. Oh. Well, grab the link just so I can put it in the show notes. All right, I'll do that. Just in case. Just in case. Speaking of Twisby. Speaking of Twisby. I was going to say that the awesome review came out. Do you remember? Did you like that pen at all? <laughs> um, <laughs> I loved it, but unfortunately, it had a bum nib. Actually, I had two bum nibs, and I was extremely disappointed with the performance of this pen out of the box. Um, you, you know, with, with Twisby supposedly hand testing all their nibs and then moving to the new Bach nibs, I was expecting this thing to just be one of the best writers I've ever used. And it wasn't. One of the nibs was unusable and the other one, the bold nib, uh, was, was pretty dry. I mean, it was, it was usable, but it was just much drier than I liked. Mine was dry. Usable, but dry. And, you know, reading reviews and, and forum posts online, I got the feeling that there might be slightly more bad nibs out there. Um, but it's hard to say because when you experience something bad with a fountain pen, you're going to be vocal about it. True. And I, I think that's what a lot of people did. So it, it's, it's hard to know truly how the, how the nibs are performing. But, uh, you know, we have read a lot of accounts of people having a good experience with their nibs. I've read quite a few. Um, people who absolutely love the pen and say it writes and writes and writes. And, uh, you know, I adjusted the flow on mine so that it, it's not as it's not dry anymore. So it, it's something that I really love now. But I, when we do a, an awesome review, we like to do a, we like to base it on the out of the box performance. And uh, apparently you could barely do that. Yeah. Um, well, on, on the one pen that had the extra fine nib. Yeah. I mean, it, it would not write. Yeah. So. But well, that goes back to but, so now we know the reason for your suggestion of last week's poll question. What do you do with a pen right. out of the box that doesn't write? Be, because that pen to fix it, like I don't think most people would have been able to adjust that pen. Um, the nib slit was not uniform in width, and the, the tines had to be be bent out and then bent back in to fix it. And and so that's what you know made me think of the question. But uh, yeah. what, what did you think of the material, the micarta? I, um, well, first, the first thing you notice with this pen that we mentioned in the review is the smell. Yes. That I don't know whether to like or not like. <laughs> because it's certainly, it's nothing I've ever smelled before that I recall. Uh, and it's strong. And I don't know, when you get a, a new smell like that, that's very strong, you don't know right away if it's like toxic or, but I guess it couldn't <laughs> be toxic. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Have you noticed it starting to like dissipate though? Yes, not, not use it goes away. It, it, yeah, I've I, like if if I smell the inside of the cap, I can still get a, a little bit. And you do that, of don't you? Absolutely, <laughs> I love that smell. So you don't think there's any health harm? Wow, well, it can't be any worse than well, I did walking outside and true. getting a whiff of that fantastic smog. But in Iowa, uh, you don't have smog in Iowa. Well, I was I was more speaking oh, towards oh, you oh thank you LA. no it's raining today it's all clear um so getting past the smell which yes i like the smell i just i don't know what it is so i don't know if it's i'm not advising people <laughs> to go smell or make artists but the the material is i really like the material i think Love it. the material is so different and feels so nice in your hand but I had a, a nib that was so dry that it, it would have made me not like the pen, but the pen has so many good qualities to it, things I really love about it, that it far outweighs, okay, I, so I have to adjust the nib, you know? And I think you, got, you have the same feelings. The, the, the pen yes. is much, has many more good points to it than, than what the nib could, could uh, Absolutely. cover up. And one reason I, I really like this material so much is, well, for one, we don't see it in any other pens. Um, and, and using it, it's like, so I, I have a problem 
if, if I'm drinking coffee in the afternoon or if I'm a little warm, my hands will perspire a little bit. And it's really difficult for me to hold on to pens with metal sections or even acrylic or plastic sections. But since this whole pen is made out of micarta, I didn't have that issue at all. Um, it's just, you know, the, the, the texture and the resin and the fibers, it was just, it, it made it really easy to grip and it made it comfortable and... I, I love it. And I, the, although it has a texture, I think it's a, it still feels smooth. You have to concentrate yeah, on finding yeah. the texture. If you concentrate on finding the texture, you can find it. But if you're not paying attention, it just feels like a smooth pen. But it it has a warmish feeling to it. It, it, it does. It, it takes like that ebonite feeling or, or celluloid to the next level almost. Yeah, I, I really, really like the pen. Um, I'm I'm over the fact that it the nib didn't was too dry out of the box, and I haven't stained my pen yet, which apparently no, people I, are saying is quite easy to do. Yeah, uh, apparently it is. Um, when I filled mine, I, I did not dunk the nib and section in the ink. I I pulled the converter, filled that, and then stuck it in there. Um, because yeah, I you know I was a little worried about it staining. I haven't done any tests, but I've seen a couple pictures of them already, and. They do seem to stain pretty easily. Right. Uh, you pointed me to uh, a blog post in Japanese that had pictures of a stained cap, Micarta cap. Yeah. And I got our foreign, our uh, what is it, our, our special correspondent from the future, Rocky in Australia, to translate <laughs> yes. that page for me. Apparently, uh, the uh, ink squirted up into the cap when they took an elevator up 50 floors. Oh, and really? So, <laughs> It stained the, the, it would stain, I guess, part of the ink stained so much inside the cap that it came to the outside of the cap. And these pens, the ones that they're releasing right now, have no inner cap. Right. And I, I believe they're putting one in, in their next run. They are. Okay. They, yeah, they stated that the first batch is, doesn't have an inner cap, but the second batch will. So um, whether or not an inner cap is necessary, I, you know, I, I, don't usually take an elevator to the 50th floor very often. Well, I, I think for the pins with clips, it's going to be necessary because there is that little hole where the clip fits into the cap. And so if ink does get into the cap, then, yeah, it could leak out of that hole. You know, I haven't uh, actually seen a Micarta with a clip in real life. You described your clip as fitting into the pen really, really well. Yes, I mean... the. The tolerance of the hole around the clip where it goes in is, is very tight, but I don't think it's sealed. I don't think they right. you know, no, used it can't be sealed. glue or anything like that. So, um, yeah, if you just filled it up with water, I'm sure that the liquid would come out through that little hole. Would the water stain the micarta? Nah. I don't think so. Hmm. So what did you think about the quality of the pen, though? Excellent. Like, what, excellent quality. I, I did, too. It was very well made, uh, very clean, no machining marks anywhere. The threads were just as good as any other pen I'd ever used. Uh, no slop, no wiggle, no play. Um, everything fit together very nicely. I was, I was impressed. And I'm still impressed. The only thing that I found on my pen was a little tiny, tiny gouge in the crown, the very top of the cap that right. you don't have on either of your pens. But someone else has commented that they have one. So my, pe my pen's twin is out there somewhere. <laughs> Um, so speaking of the inner cap thing, the the pin that I got with the clip, I, I tested it when I first got it and then I capped it and I set it aside for two weeks to see how no inner fact would affect the seal and if the nib would dry up. I pulled it out last night and I put it on the paper and it started writing right away. After how long? I'm sorry. Two weeks. Two weeks. No use. See, it, it stayed capped the whole time and... And I took it out and it wrote right away. So I don't think anyone should have really any concern about it not having an inner cap as far as the nib drying out. No, two weeks is a long time. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I mean, if, if you don't use your pen for two weeks, you know, I think there's a bigger problem <laughs> yes, there. A much bigger problem. But you did that only for testing purposes, right? Correct. So we won't hold that against you. In fact, we applaud you. Thank you for making um, that sacrifice. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> So one of the arguments that I've seen a lot about this pen is the practicality of it. You know, we've, it's, it's $100 to, 
What, what do you think about that price point, Mr. Eric? Uh, I was surprised at the price point. It, I think I said that in the review. I, I, was, I was confused about the price uh, before I had the pen in my hand. And now I'm no longer confused. That's really all I can say is once you have it, yes, I want it to be a piston filler, of course. Um, and, I'll get to and that in they a can, I, I believe I said that in the review too. Uh, Twisby has obviously proven that they can do a piston filler uh, and on the cheap that really works. Mm-hmm. So that's the next step for this pen. It really has to become a piston filler. But um, even though it's not a piston filler at the moment, um, uh, it's not it's not overpriced. I'm going to say that. I don't I don't think so either. Um, it, it's certainly no 540. Um, well, it's not it's, not, I don't it's think, not a bargain pen. It's you know. Well, I don't think any pen that Twisby's going to make from here on out is going to be a 540. I mean, you're not going to get that talking- level of pen for 50 bucks. Um, I, I think the 540 was kind of a... And, and, well, they were introducing us to Twisby, were they not? Yeah, they were. I mean, they, they completely smoked every other manufacturer. I mean, they, they beat them at their own game. And I think people expect that now from every single pen they make. But, but they're, not, they're looking at it in a different light. Like, when I see the Micarta, I see them doing the same thing that they did with the 540. What other Micarta is out there? A sailor that costs six, $700? And you can buy this one for a hundred bucks. That's just as good quality. Um, and it, it may not be fifty bucks of the five forty, but it still smokes any other competitor out there. And and the, the you mentioned the sailor that's Micarta. That it's not complete Micarta either. They use well, I'm going to call it plastic. Whatever they use for the threads is not Micarta. Right. Yeah. Sailor uses a different material for their threads. Um, and you know, with this Vac seven hundred coming out, what other Vac fillers are there? There's the Pilot. What is that? 78 G, I think. Um, Visconti makes a couple. But what? You've got at least three or four hundred dollars before you get into one of those. And the VAC's going to be 85, 90 max. So. The, the, are, you, you're, Twisby, are people complaining about the price of the VAC 700? Are you hearing rumbling? Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, they are. They, I mean, they, they want it to be cheaper. They want it to be like the 540. And, you know, they're, they're complaining because they don't get the vac filler. You know, why would I want this filling system? Just give me another 540. And personally for me, I, I like this vac filler because it has a reminiscence of, you know, vintage vacuum filling pens. So it's, it's kind of nostalgic for me in a way. But it's, it's made with modern materials. So I, I definitely can't wait to get my hands on it. And I, I won't have any problem spending 85 bucks on it. No, neither will I. And the Micarta, I don't. All I can say is, I, I, once I had the pen in my hand, I was no longer confused by the $100 price tag. It's worth $100. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to the... You know, I was just about to say that I can't wait to get my hands on all that Twisby has coming out. But I'm not really <laughs> interested in that click. No, you don't... Because nope. if I'm going to get a, a, a vanishing point, it's going to be a vanishing point. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. And it'll be interesting to see if their design changes at all. Oh, do you, I, are we taking bets on that? <laughs> <laughs> we could. I mean, we've what? only seen, um, you know, design mock-ups. So. Of course it's going to change. Everything changes. Um, one thing we should talk about uh, with the Micarta pen is the fuzzy threads. Oh I mean, yes, we, you. We should talk about you them. Got an we, excellent picture of those. We should talk about them because I love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Because they're different. What other pen has a fuzzy nib? Has a fuzzy nib? <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't have a fuzzy nib. Fuzzy threads. There, there aren't fuzzy threads on on any other pen that I know of. And so I, 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 it, I think people can brag about the the fuzziness of their of their threads. And um, you are yours smoothing out at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing I've been doing with both pens, so that the clipped one that I didn't use for two weeks, uh, when I uncapped it last night, I, I checked the feel of the threads, and, and there was definitely a, a grittiness there. And with my other Micarta, the one with no clip, I've been cycling the cap on and off multiple times per day, and there is a, defer- a definite difference between the two. Um, the clipless one is is very smooth, and there's there's no gritty feeling at all. So it's it's a big contrast between the two, and it only took 
probably seven days maybe to, to feel the difference. Right. Uh, grittiness is a, a good way to describe the way the, the feel of putting the cap on when the pen is new. <clears throat> but uh, it's not difficult to put the cap on or take it off. It's just... Oh, no, no, it does, no, not It's not all. really butter smooth to do. You feel something as you're doing it. Now that yours is smoothed out, though, if you take a, lo- a loop and look at the threads, are they still fuzzy or has all the or has there, fuzzy there wuzzy gone away? <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't gone away completely, but it, it doesn't look like that image that you posted. It's certainly not as fuzzy as that. Not as fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. So one thing uh, you pointed out is that you would like to see this in a piston filter. Heck yeah. Um, I, I've got to disagree. Really? Go for it. Well, first, I, I don't think there's any way that the price would stay the same if it was a piston filler. Well, they filler. could have done this at a, as a piston filler and sold it for $100. They're making the pen. They can sell it whatever they want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, if they wanted to make less money on right. it, they if could they do it. If they wanted to lower profits, they could you know, give the pen away if they wanted to. <laughs> um, but all things being equal, don't you think... Adding a piston filler would increase the price? Uh, yes, obviously. Okay. Are you fine with that? Would, would you pay 120 for a piston filler? If this were a piston filler, I'd pay 150 for it. You'd pay 150 pay for it without a gold nib? Without a gold nib. Okay. Okay. Um, my, my other point is I don't think it would just be like a 540 piston. I think they would have to add some sort of sleeve... Or, or do something with the inside of the barrel to allow the piston create a, to create a good seal. Oh, yeah, they'd, I have think to, that would, they'd have to totally put something inside the barrel, uh, yeah. like maybe a mini. <laughs> Just put a <laughs> mini inside there. But my point of that is, is it would be reducing the ink capacity of the pen. Reducing it from the cartridge that you're using? Uh, the, the no, 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 no. From, from the piston of like a 540 or something that we're used to. We, it'd be reduced, I think, quite a bit from that. Is that why you and, like a piston? Because it holds a lot of ink? That's one of the reasons why. Is that the yeah. main reason? Well, I, I don't know if I'd say the main reason. I guess I'd have to, you know, I, I'd, still, I'd have to see the ink capacity of whatever piston they could put in there. If it, if it held less than a cartridge worth of ink, then no, it's not worth it. Don't even do it. But if it holds um, two cartridges worth of ink... <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. See, that's, that's not really, I don't know. The, but my other problem with that is they're going to have some kind of a seam where the piston knob is. And I think that would disrupt the look of the pin. I, I don't think it would blend in like it does on, say, the Lamy 2000. Hmm. I guess they, they'd have to try it. But why don't, yeah, why don't I mean, they, I'm they all should, for they should, try should it. try it. Send us a few mock-ups and we'll have a look at them and see what we think. <laughs> All right, I like that. Send that to Speedy and, and tell him what to oh, do. Oh, Speedy's listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so have we uh, gotten any letters this week? Anything in the mailbag? Uh, well, Tamara wrote. I already went through Tamara's email, uh, uh, snail mail. Uh, aside from that, um, Ken wrote. Ken wrote to say, A... Somehow I only discovered your podcasts last week, and I've been having a blast listening to them. And plus, he wrote on Parker paper. It's a, I don't believe it's, well, it says parker.com at the bottom. <clears throat> he got the, a tablet of this Parker paper, and he was at the Arkansas Pen Show and going over this paper, reviewing this paper, basically, with Susan Worth, and they both loved the paper. He sent us a blank sheet of it. So that I guess I'll tear it in half and send you half, or perhaps I'll take right. it to Chicago. Um, they're they're hoping that we, the fountain pen geeks, <laughs> can determine who makes this paper. <laughs> Which I'm not sure how. What, how I don't know how I would do that. <laughs> I don't know either. We'll have to. Well, you know, we'll send it over to Nibs, the 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 science portion of our of our conglomeration, and <laughs> they'll send it. You know. They'll do their their tests, tests. you know. And I I don't know if people know that we have such nice laboratory facilities at at Fountain Pen Geeks. You know, it's like we we can't even get close to that place. I mean, we run FB Geeks and they won't even let us near it. No, I mean, if you've seen the, the, what is that TV show, Bones? Is that what it's called? The one? Yeah. yeah, They rent our facility to film 
every Sunday from midnight to midnight. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. They let them in there. Jeez. <laughs> the other That's... interesting thing we got in the mail uh, was I got a notice from the Chicago Pen Show that my prepaid oh, registration yeah. was received and I'm good to go. Yeah, me too. Chicago Check it out. Too. So uh, apparently we have to go at this point. We are good to go. Well, I've got my hotels booked. I've got the time off work. There's nothing stopping me now. Except that road closure. I guess there's, oh, you know, there's always another road to take, isn't there? I've got a Jeep, so I can make my own road. <laughs> and aside from the mail, we got a phone call. Sweet. Yeah, We've not we had a phone, phone call, call in, in like while. forever. Um, I, I didn't have time to record it, so I won't play it. But it was Tim. Tim called. Tim is Maneuver in our forums. Okay. Um, Tim called specifically to ask... Uh, and I think this stems from the poll question again about what do you do with a nib that doesn't write well out of the box. He wants to know, in our experience, what is the best out of the box nib we've ever run across? And I already have my answer. Oh wow! Out, well, out of why the box, don't you go ahead? Because I need to think about this. Out for of the a box, not touching it, just filling and writing and saying, "Wow, this is a good nib," has got to go for me to the Monteverde and Vincia stylus. It was. Um, I was shocked. Yeah, I had a good experience with mine because I got the factory stub in that. Um, and you had, I had an extra fine. Which, you know, yeah, you that's just, surprising. You just expect it to be scratchy. You're right. Um, you know, I would have to say uh, for one of our awesome reviews, we did the Noodler's Ebonite. And I, I remember the nib in that being awesome. It was, it was very smooth. It was a pretty wet rider, which I prefer, and I think, what was that, like 15 bucks or something cheap, for that pen? Cheap, cheap. I could not believe how well it wrote out of the box. So, so right now, I'm going to have to say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we're talking prices, the yes, the, how, many, how many of those noodlers could you get for the price of one Monteverde Invincia? Like, uh, probably like four or five. Four or five or six. six. <laughs> um, but still, the, the Monteverde Invincia is less than $100. It's like ninety five, yeah. oh, and it's it's, it's good, eighty dollars on the street, and and yeah, that nib. Plus the nib is cool looking. It's that black one that looks like it's made from the material of Darth Vader's helmet. So, <laughs> yeah. So Tim, that's my answer, and that's Dan's answer. So, we we've got some good action going on in the forums. We had a review of the Kuwaiko Lilliput by Crazy Ivan. Now, you actually like this pen quite a bit, I've been you? watching that pen for a long time. Uh, I, I've never yeah. seen one, though, in real life. And I, I, the only place I know that you can get it is jetpens.com. I, I don't know of any other place to get it. So when you go to their website and look at it, they have it in pictures next to a penny. And the penny looks pretty big next to this pen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. Um, Crazy Ivan, in his review at our forum... He posts several very good pictures, actually, and one of them is next to the Kuwaiko Sport, and it just looks tiny compared to that thing. It makes the Kuwaiko Sport it. look pretty big. It does. Um, uh, so I I appreciate the review very much, and I, I saw it and as soon as he tweeted it. I went and looked at it because I the the problem the reason I don't have one of these pens right now is first of all it's it's, it's there's lots to like about it. It's Kuwaiko. It's, mm -hmm. And it's all aluminum, uh, which I which I like, even though that means in this particular case it's cartridge only because you can't get a converter in it. Right. Um, it's fifty five dollars. Really. And, and just now I wonder if the Twisby Minis are more than fifty five dollars. Am I going to have the same reaction? It's a, it's an interesting thing because you know, when I look at the lily putt I, and I see fifty five dollars, I say, "Wow, a lily putt or a five forty, a lily putt or a five forty. And so far, the lily putt has not won that battle in my head. Yeah, I I don't think it would for me either. I mean, it's a very cool looking pen. It's it's tiny. It would be, you know, super awesome for when you need a tiny pen like that. But I just don't how, know if often, I how often do you need something. a tiny pen like that, Dad? <laughs> Not very often. No. And I, I don't particularly care for small pens. But something about mini pens, I like. The, yeah. They have to be smaller than small, though. They have to be mini. But not, for some reason, I think the price should go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a little harder to make them that that's, small. That's what so. Philip said. Uh, Philip, uh, uh, Philip Wang and Twisby, in his Geek of the Week interview, he said it's it's more difficult to manufacture smaller parts than it is to manufacture the larger parts. Uh, uh, and you manufacture what? 
John Deere tractors or something. <laughs> so, so that must be really easy, huh? Hey, we've got some small parts on I those machines. It, but does John Deere make them or order them? No, we order yeah. them. Um, so I've, I've got a little trivia question for you. For okay, how for for you, Eric? For me, I'm listening. How yes? How many Pelican M620s do you know of? Have I met personally? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm asking. How many have you met personally? No, how many different um, like color combinations? Do you know of they, they they make them in all kinds of different colors and I want to know how many you know of. Uh, I probably couldn't name one off the top of my head. It's, it's a, a pelican is not something that I follow very closely because to me well, they're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, we, you're gonna get I some think, hot well, water. No, I think for we that. talked. Oh yeah, Porsche design pens are made by pelican. And we talked about it last week, That's and true. I was surprised that pelican could make anything that didn't look like a pelican. So I, so, I can't answer that. What well, I'll say four, but I couldn't name four different versions of their m620 is available in 12 different versions so i wasn't that far off now by, no, by versions you mean like a color well, combination because yeah it's, it's and all they the have same a name pen. for each one it is all yeah the they're all the same pen, pen. but they, they come in these different colors and uh justin davy b in our forum he says He's got eight of them, and there's four more to go. And he's posted a picture of the eight that he has. And I was like, what are these? I've, I've, I've never, never seen, seen these. these in my life. I, I need more information, <laughs> Davey. Give me more information. And so I'm hoping he'll post the name of all the colors in there, you know, and when they were available and, and the things like that because the colors are just beautiful. I mean, well, I, they're I amazing. Like uh, Pelican pens, and they do really nice. I mean, they're quality pens, and they are beautiful pens. But to me, if you've seen one Pelican, you've seen them all. <laughs> Except for that 1,000, the Demonstrator 1,000. That was quite amazing. But uh, Davey should probably have that up by, by yesterday, since he's also one of our correspondents from the future. Ah, okay. So it'll be there when we go after the show, yeah. huh? <laughs> he was reading cool. your mind. Um, so, uh, Eric, do we want to talk a little bit about what's in our collection or what's leaving your collection? Uh, what's leaving my collection? Uh, yes, I had a little bit of a sale going on over the weekend. Uh, I yeah, I thought like you stopped <laughs> taking your meds or something because I checked the classifieds forum at FB Geeks and I saw four or five posts by you and I was like, this can't be right. Someone must have hacked his account. That is strange. But isn't no, it? I mean I never sell but, pens. Yeah, <laughs> what what are you getting rid of? Uh, I've I listed a, a couple of uh, Lamy All Stars, both of which have sold. I listed uh, my Waterman Fifty Two, which sold today. I listed my Aurora Eighty Eight, the vintage one. The, oh my god! I gosh. know that's that's probably the one that made you think someone's hacked his account. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just it was getting no use. It's sitting in a drawer, and it deserves a life. It deserves to be used. Um, and I listed, I think I listed the Monteverde and Vincia, and I've got uh, a few others that need to be listed. I took all the pictures, and they're all ready to be listed. It's just time to do a little house cleaning. That's all there is to it. Because, and I realized that when I got the Monteverde, the, the pink pen. I had no place to put it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and all of you I looked at pens, and I said, I haven't used you in a long time. Should I just keep you here, locked up? Eric, the solution <laughs> is just to buy more pen cases. Well, that, you don't get rid of pens. You just buy more pen cases. You, uh, yes, I could do that. <laughs> you know, I, I thought, like, when I saw that modern Aurora 88 go up for sale, I thought, like, you were in debt to the mob and they were coming <laughs> looking for their money and, like, you were one step away from selling body parts. But No, that's just another pen that I haven't used in a long time. Uh, so I, I went through my pens and I looked... And I thought it's difficult to part with pens. But, then, you know, that's another thing is that none of them have to sell. I don't care if they sell or not. I'm just saying, <laughs> here you go, people. If someone wants this pen and is going to use it, then here, you know, I can pass it along. Uh, and I, because I, I, yes, I, there's a really cool word for that that I'm probably not going to pronounce correctly. I anthropomorphize my pens. Ah, yes. I'm glad you know what that means. <laughs> I do. I, I give them human characters. I don't name them all. Because I have too many for that. <laughs> I probably would. <laughs> yeah, if I only had three, all I probably names. would. Uh, so, yeah, I feel bad that they're just sitting in a drawer doing nothing when they should be, uh, what, meeting their destiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I actually got a couple new pens this week too. Um, big surprise, right? <laughs> I but you get cool pens. Uh, th just this evening, actually, I got a pen in from Italy. It's a vintage Aurora 88K with all its original packaging and paperwork. And the really cool thing about it is the certificate that's in the box has the same serial number as the pen, which I've not ever seen before. That is so absolutely cool. Original packaging, the certificate, which is numbered, has the same yep. number as the pen. Oh, right. That's cool. You, I you, mean, you, I've, you, I've seen... You tweeted a picture of that, didn't you? I did. Yeah. So I've I've seen them before with you know numbers that, that where the pen and the certificate don't match. I've had numbers on the case that don't match the pen, um, but this is the first one where everything matches, and I'm super excited about it. That's fantastic! Yeah, well, I can't wait to see that. Are you going to have it in Chicago? Maybe. Um, I Maybe. hope it's sold oh, before you're... I get to Chicago. <laughs> you just bring them in and sell them. That's right. Any other pens you get? Um, I don't have any right now. I'm waiting on another Shadow Wave to come in. Um, and I think that's about it. But uh, oh, you know what else we both got this week, or well, last week? Uh, uh, I should probably remember that. <laughs> <laughs> An Aston. Uh, what is it? Is it a twenty pin? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a twenty pin case. Yes. Yes, it's it's very similar to the Franklin Kristoff, uh ten pins on each side, but this one has the divider attached to one side that that flaps over the pins. Um. It's a fantastic case. I really like it. I like it too. Uh, but, uh, I have two 20 pen cases. One is the Franklin Kristoff, and one is this Aston that we both just got. And I wish I could make them have children to take the, the <laughs> good points of each and make it into one perfect case. Combine the best of both. Right. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sure Scott Franklin Kristoff is going to be at Chicago. We should sit him down and talk to him. Have a little chat. Yeah, because I mean, you and I could put in our in our dreams, we could dream up the perfect pen case. But what are you gonna do? Get your wife to start sewing? <laughs> how do how do you make a pen case? <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, we should definitely talk to him if he's there. I got a very so, uh, interesting pen today in the mail. Oh really? Technically, it's a pen, <laughs> but you'll ne you would never guess what it is. Do you want to try one one guess? No, I don't. Just show us the pen, dang it. Well, we can't really. I'll show it, but we also have to talk about it because this turns into the audio only podcast. I got a dip pen, oh! but not just any kind of a dip pen. I got a bamboo dip pen. Whoa. That actually has a cap, if you can see that. Take the cap off, and there's your, your nib. Nice. Yeah, so the, this, I got this. <laughs> I accidentally found this on Etsy, and it, it, oh. it came from Portugal. And, of course, I've used it already as... as uh, you you could see that the the nib is all uh, filled with black ink. Um, I just think it's the coolest thing in the world because when you put the cap on, it looks like you just got a piece of bamboo sitting on your desk. Brian Anderson says it looks like something a ninja would carry. <laughs> hey Brian, what are you doing here? Was was Brian? Were you here when we talked about your blog? Oh yeah, we did mention you earlier on in the show. Oh, he says no. He missed it. Well, you'll have to catch it in the replay. We talked about your blog, Brian. So, so what's it like to write with that? I mean, how does it feel in the hand and, and on the paper? Um, it's very light, obviously. Um, and the person who made the nib made it. Well, I don't know. The nib has some flex to it, but you don't flex a wooden nib. <laughs> right. You're like pushing it into the paper. It's uh, it's really a cool thing to write with. I'm not going to write uh, sonnets with it. Uh, but I'm just going to doodle with it. It's a fun pen. It was super cheap and it's super cool and That's came awesome. from Portugal. So, so I'm, I'm branching out. Uh, I also have my eye on a ballpoint pen. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I'll have to save the details for if and when it ever does arrive. <laughs> you know, if I'm looking at a ballpoint pen, it's going to be even cooler than the ballpoint that Speedy carries. Yeah, right? I hope we'll so. just go for that. We'll say it that way. Uh, have we talked about everything that we have to talk about before we get someone on the phone and give something away? Yeah, I think so. Then let's do a geek challenge. All right. Um, what's, what are we going to give away give this away week? some ink. Some, some platinum mix-free ink. This is the pink ink. It's cyclamen pink is their official name for it. This was uh, given to us 
by Dick at Luxury Brands. And so we'll just give away some ink. Uh, we'll play the Geek Challenge as per usual. I've got three true or false questions. Someone will call in. We'll ask the questions with a little help from Dan. Uh, and uh, the winner, the winner, the caller will win the ink. <laughs> Might as well just say it that way. Just answer any way you want. You're going to win the ink. Uh, so call me now if you want some ink and you get to play the Geek Challenge. 909. Six four seven five zero five six. While we're waiting for one more time, that was nine zero nine six four seven five zero five six. Well, just in case you didn't get it, just, just in case. In fact, just text me your address. Oh, somebody's <laughs> calling already. Las All Vegas, right. Nevada is calling. So let's get this person. We did on. not have any hesitation this no, time. Someone was at the ready. Las Vegas. I'm trying to think of who is in Las Vegas. Hello. 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 Who is this, please? My name is Owen. Owen, how are you today? Fantastic, how are you? Good. Uh, according to my phone, you're calling us from Vegas, baby. Absolutely. Either that or it's your cell phone and you're, you know, visiting the Goulets <laughs> in the south of France. Um, how's Vegas today? Hello, you're breaking up a bit there. Oh, how's Vegas today, I said? Uh, Vegas is fabulous. Vegas is fabulous. I miss Vegas. I'm going to have to go back to Vegas. Are you ready to play the Geek Challenge, Owen? Hello? Hello? I'm here. Are you here? Uh oh. Yeah, I'm just having connection issues. Okay. I've got your phone number in case we get disconnected. I can call you after the show. But in the meantime, their first question is true or false. Cartridge converter filling systems are the favorite filling systems of FP Geeks. Uh, no. Oh, he didn't even have to wait for Dan to try that one. Uh, yes, that is that is false. We 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 like we use cartridge converters, especially if they have a converter. But uh, does anybody have to know what our favorite one is? Is that a question? Mine's a piston. Uh, you kind of like the pistons a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, we like pistons. I do. We like Dan. Do you? Yeah, Dan likes pistons <laughs> yep. too. Second yep. question. Question number two. True or false? The Twisby Micarta is made from celluloid. <laughs> Owen is paying attention. <laughs> that is false. Uh, He's really it's good. It's made from, from Micarta, which is the brand name. Is it a brand name? I think it is a brand yeah, name. Yeah, it is, oh, it is a brand name. I wonder if you have to pay whoever has the brand. Anyway, moving on to question number three. Is that what I want? Is that, is that what I want? Because that's what I really want. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I want? Uh, we do actually have one to give away. We have to talk about that, Dan. Anyway. Oh, we do. No, yeah, this is for ink. Pink ink, as a matter of fact, since we're in a pink mood this week. Question number three and the one for the prize. True or false? Delta pens are made in England. Oh, I have no idea, but I'm going to say false. Yeah, that's a good answer because Delta that's is an Italian pen company. And although English pens are made by Delta in Italy, which we talked about, isn't that the Queen's pen is, is made by Delta, Dan? Uh, Visconti. Oh, Visconti. Sorry. Getting my Italian pen companies mixed <laughs> up. Uh, Deltas are made in, in Italy. So, Dan, uh, talk amongst yourselves <laughs> while I say talk. <laughs> so, that would be like me. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have a, a split or multiple personalities. You know, Entertain the guests. You want conversation here. Um, does anybody have any questions in the chat that they'd like to throw out? We'll get those ready for uh, the end of the show. Thank you. But uh, how many of you are going to be in Chicago? There's a poll in our forums that you can definitely check out, and we have a little discussion going on there. Um, Eric, are you back? I'm back. I'm just, you know, enjoying your soliloquy. Oh. There's a poll. Oh, there's a, a discussion in our forums about who's going to Chicago. Uh, yeah, there is. There's a poll there and a little discussion on everyone who's going to be there. Um, I think the Andersons are going to be there. Yes, they will definitely be there. Well, it's they have to go like every yeah, year no, it's because their it's their anniversary. They always dinner, uh, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> we 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 didn't get the we, had, uh, what was it? we didn't go to the wedding, but they always dinner. Is that how that works? <laughs> like, we, I think we should take them oh, out oh, for well, dinner. I, mean, I don't know. Do hey, we'll figure it out when we get there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the geek so and then, you mentioned something about. Giving away a Micarta? Well, we have one to give away. I hear that. So, right? so we have a Micarta to give away, and and um, actually, I guess I'll tell the whole story. the The Micarta that I have is the one that Twisby sent us um, for review purposes. You you rushed off and bought two of them right away, so you had your own to to review. 
Right. So uh, since I'm not technically allowed to keep free gifts, uh, free gifts, oxymoron, uh, redundant. <laughs> uh, since I'm not technically allowed to keep gifts, I bought a Micarta that we can now give away. Uh, it's being used right now by Brian Gray because he wanted to see one, so I sent it to him. So the pen we're going to give away is not only a Micarta, but it's also a Micarta that was previously used by Brian Gray. So this is going to be a cool pen. But the question, the, the, the problem is we don't know how to give it away. Right. So anybody listening, if you have an idea for a cool giveaway, or for a cool pen, you know, send us an email. Oh, that's a good segue, isn't it? To, yes, yeah. how you can, contact, can contact us. us. Just send us an, an email, podcast at fpgeeks.com. Give us a call, 415-685-GEEK, 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We have a forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. You can even write to us. Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346, United States of America. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know how we're going to give away that Micarta, but we have to make it fun. Brian has an excellent suggestion. Do you know how many Brians says, there are in the world? Are we talking Brian Gray, Brian Goulet, Brian well, Anderson? We're just talking about in chat. Okay. Who else is going to be contacting me? He says video clips on the FP Geeks Facebook page or website or forum with the most likes of why I want a Micarta theme. Ooh. Now, do you think our audience can make video clips easily and get them on Facebook? Facebook? Yeah, you know, I couldn't even do that. <laughs> oh, come on. I could do the video. I just I don't have a Facebook account to uh, You could upload it to you do YouTube and paste the link into Facebook or our forums or wherever we decide oh, I, to That's an excellent it. idea. I like video. So video is I, cool. I do like that. But Brian Anderson has to be the first one to post a video. Yes, Brian, we expect you to participate in this. You know, since Brian's here, let's talk about him for a second. He posted a classified right. too that I noticed. I noticed it because I get yeah. I get I get text messages every time somebody posts a classified at fountainpenclassifieds.com. He oh. he I believe if I remember correctly and Brian you can correct me if I'm wrong, at the Arkansas Pen Show, he found some Estrabrooks that are marked as made in Mexico in Spanish, hecho en México. Um, really? I think they're, they're the LJ size. They're black and they're really cool. That is crazy. Now, I know literally nothing about Esther Brooks, but that is crazy. He says it's the weirdest he's ever yeah, seen. Uh, it's the weirdest I've ever seen, too. And Mexican Esther Brooks, new old stock. So, thank you for being here, Brian. And I'm, I'm doing everything I can not to buy one of those Esther Brooks at you in Mexico. <laughs> Wow, those are awesome. I'm going to paste the link into chat. Um, yeah, very cool. Very cool. So, Something you don't see every we, day. In fact, you never see it. We will figure out what we're going to do with that McCarty giveaway and uh, definitely keep an eye on the website. You'll see a post about it explaining the rules and uh, how to participate. But uh, Eric, do we have anything else? Uh, not at the moment. I believe we are through for the day. Um, so Thank you, everyone, thank you, for joining everyone. us. Uh, and until next week, this is Eric. And this is Dan. Uh, adios.